Hi and welcome back to a new video. This is something you probably did not expect. I also did not expect this because this is the new Regner Cooling RCS Pro case that costs 2,200 euro. So that's probably the most expensive case I've ever tested. They made a case quite a while ago, which we tested that was extremely expensive and extremely disappointing. And then they, at least from what Dennis, the owner said, they fixed everything that I gave them as feedback. They brought this here. He even introduced everything to me, like showed all the changes to me. Like from what I saw already, this could be quite nice. And we will test this in today's video. Hetzner now offers a new dedicated root server powered by a Ryzen 7 7700 CPU, which you should definitely not miss. The AX52 starts at 59 euro per month and is equipped with two one terabyte NVMe SSDs, gigabyte connection and as usual unlimited traffic. The powerful 8 core CPU is paired with 64 gigabyte of DDR5 memory by default, but can be upgraded to up to 128 gigabyte DDR5 memory and even with ECC if required. You will benefit from Hetzner's excellent service and of course there is no minimum contract period. Find out more in the link below. It is just absolutely insane how big this case is. I mean, apart from maybe like a 1000D or like a V3000, I mean, this is probably the biggest, heaviest, like most insane, probably also the most expensive case I have ever reviewed or ever tested. I also spent quite a bit of time with Dennis, like he ran me through the entire case, like some development steps, explained a lot about the case. And I think this is going to be very interesting because I mean, everything when it comes to the design is always subjective. You might like it or you might not like it, but in any way, the cooling has to work out like anything features have to work. And that's the stuff we're going to test. Similar to his previous design, you can still customize the paint job. And that's also causing me some issues with filming, with making sure that you can get a solid impression of how it looks like in reality, because the front is like glossy black. And I mean, it is really glossy black and that's sometimes a bit difficult to catch up on the camera. But as you can see, he surprised me with a black and red color combination. If you go to his website, he also showcases a black and blue version, which I think looks absolutely beautiful as well. But to me personally, black and red, I think that is a pretty solid color choice. Talking to Dennis, he also pointed out that this is his first prototype case and also the painting is not yet perfect. Uh, that's also something I would complain a little bit about. I mean, it's, it's in a state which is acceptable but it could be better, especially if you take the price into account. I'm trying so you can get an impression by just looking at the reflections of like the surface quality and the quality of the paint. So it's, it's okay, but it could be better. Similar to the previous version, the entire case is still made out of three pieces. So you have the main part in the center, which is black, and you have on the left and the right, the side panels, which contain radiators. But this time they are completely different. And also the entire design is with those triangle shapes. And in these triangle shapes, you have dust filters. As you might know, I'm personally not a big fan of these kind of dust filters because they definitely restrict your airflow quite a lot. I mean, they will do their job. They will protect your components for, from dust. But at the same time, you're definitely heavily restricting the airflow. And I'm definitely looking forward to see how this performs, keeping in mind that you have these dust filters everywhere. And this like fine dust filter, you can also find on the side, but it will give the case a quite nice look. Like with the triangle cutout and then this very fine like mesh dust filter. I think it looks quite beautiful. Also on the bottom, you have the Made in Germany logo because this case is entirely made in Germany. And that's probably why it's also quite a bit more expensive than most of the cases you can find on the market, which are, I would say, like 90% made in Asia. And here in the front, we have the shiny Regner Cooling logo. You can find the same kind of design language on the back of the case. So these triangle shape cutouts then filled with the like fine dust filters. And 
Like one improvement I already like over the first generation or the first design is that like back then he was using a lot of like 3D printed parts also for IO shield and stuff, which I did not really like. I mean, with this type of product, this type of price, I don't see that you should use 3D printed parts. They just don't have the surface quality to match this kind of price, but this changed. So they're all like sheet metal pieces. And by the way, this case is fully made out of aluminum and then painted afterwards. But I mean, if this was made out of steel, it would be even heavier, but that probably, or like for sure, because it's made out of aluminum, that definitely adds up to the price. But now going back to that, like the 3D printed parts, this is no longer 3D printed. This is now a CNC milled part. I had to take off the side panel off camera though, because it's, it's just way too big, way too heavy, but it's using the same kind of mechanism that you have these kind of like tiny like notches and nozzles and then uh, you basically have to take it, you have to lift it off and pull it to the side. And if you'd open the case and see this, honestly, that is insane. Like what did Dennis do? This, this is completely nuts. From the first case he did, I was like skeptical from the first minute looking at the like passive design, but this, I mean, at this point I did not test anything yet. Still, I think this is like too good to fail, kind of. Because like what we have in here, we have four of the Noctua NFA20. So those are 200 millimeter fans, four of them. And underneath we have an alpha cool radiator. That's a 1260 millimeter radiator. So that's basically a Mora in each of the side panels with four 200 millimeter Noctua fans. Just the surface area alone is completely insane. The only thing I'm still a little bit worried about is the like small dust filter, if it allows to push the air through. He said he tested it and he's confident that the cooling capability will be there. We will definitely test this, but just, just the components alone in a single side panel. If you would buy the radiator and like four of these fans and then the fittings and the tubing going to it, you would have to spend 400 euro just for these components alone. And this time to have the entire assembly, PC build and everything a lot easier, we have quick connect fittings included for the side panel. And I will quickly remove that. Of course, we also have to power these fans with uh, electric current and all of this, like the wiring is done in here. We have a single cable leaving from here done with these like tiny strips on here, which I think is a good solution. It also keeps the tubing together. And then you have this single cable to power the four fans all high quality, I think all of these are Noctua components. If you slide up and down the side panels, obviously you would like easily scratch the paint on the black part. That's why you have these tiny rubber pieces on here. Previously, he used some like Velcro stuff on here, which seemed a bit DIY, but like this, it's like glued very accurate and also like high quality. So this also looks now very professional. Taking a look inside the case, you can see that the mainboard tray is also painted in the same type of color you would choose for the outer parts, which is interesting because theoretically you would not be able to look inside. But I think it gives the case a very nice touch to still have this kind of contrast to it. So that's definitely paying attention to detail. And if you paid attention on the previous camera shot, you probably already noticed that there is a pump and reservoir combination mounted in here, which is an aqua computer version. You can see that by just looking at the filter. It's also a very high quality component. I think like quality wise, maybe heat killer would match it, but that's like the perfect component choice. One thing I would like to highlight is that like right now there is a D5 pump mounted, but if you would buy it, you would have the choice between D5 and DDC reservoir, but not the pumps. You would have to buy the pump yourself, which I think is a good choice because there are different pumps on the market, different way to address the speed of the pump. And I think this will allow you like best customization options. And that's why I think just having like the, like reservoir mounted in here is like the best thing you can do. There's one 3D printed part which I spotted in here, but it's simply to hold the tubing in place. And I'm not even sure if it's just to hold it in place during transport or if you would like remove it later on. But I think that's totally fine. I mean, obviously you would not do on this like small serious amount of cases injection molding that doesn't make sense. You might CNC mill it, but I don't think it would add any value to the case. So I think this is totally fine. The case stands are also a bit different from last time, but I think it's like design-wise also a nice choice. 
and you have some like additional plastic piece that's attached with some rivets underneath. That is to protect your surface. So if you move the case because it's pretty heavy, then this way the like plastic piece will prevent any kind of scratches on your desk. The front panel also looks sufficient. We have four times USB type A. We have dual USB type C and dual audio jacks. Also small detail. If you pay attention to the design of the power button, you might notice that this is actually the I.O. panel of a Corsair 1000D. The second side panel is identical to the other one. It's the same four 200 millimeter Noctua fans and also the same Alpha Cool copper radiator as you can see just looking through the fans. And also just if you look at the side panel of the case, yeah. He definitely also spent some time on the cable management, even though you would have to open up again. But again, that's paying attention to detail. The last time I was not happy with RGB integration because it was using some cheap like AliExpress controller, which was not compatible with any kind of RGB typical header you would have on your mainboard. But now he used some Corsair components. So the entire thing is now automatically IQ compatible. There is an R RGB strip on the bottom of the case. You will have some like indirect lightning. So that's pretty awesome. And honestly, like looking at all these tiny pieces, I can like see all the criticism I had last time. Like he actually worked, like literally he worked on every single part that I criticized and like made it perfect. Well, I guess almost perfect. I'm trying to figure out how I can actually put a PSU in there. Because if you check on the back, the shroud is also attached with rivets. That means I cannot take this off. Not quite sure. This is a 1600i. I picked it because it's quite big and it's good for compatibility testing, as you can see. That was a solid fail from my side. I just called Dennis and I was like, how are you supposed to put the PSU in there? And he's like, well, just simply take off the back part or look into the manual. And I was like, okay. Then I checked my email, he sent the manual to me and uh, yeah, I simply did not see it. And also in my head, I still had that these are rivets, but they're like those very specific screws and that explains why like it was so inconvenient to take off the screws. Everything would have been fine. Look, so easy. Now this makes sense. Another thing he highlighted is that in my prototype state case, the PSU is taking in the air from the bottom and in the retail one, this will be changed. So the PSU will be rotated by 180 degree and will intake the cold air from the top. Simply because he said that due to the big cutout that's required to fit all kind of PSU sizes, the like bottom part easily becomes more unstable, especially when there is a big change in temperature. Let's say like the top part of the case is warm and the bottom part is colder, then this can cause some shrinking and bending in material. And he said the good way to fix this was rotating the PSU to give the bottom part of the sheet additional stability. I don't think it really matters. It might matter to you if you have a PSU with like an OLED on the side or something, then the orientation might matter. But apart from that, that's probably totally fine. Just to also cover this, I wanted to remove the front part and also check how this looks like underneath. And what you can find here at first look is a bit weird, but those U-shaped trays are HDD and SSD mounting places. So you could in theory mount at least four HDDs and I guess at least eight 2.5 inch SSDs. It's a pretty interesting solution to mount this in the front. Mainboard mounting was straightforward and easy. All the holes were in the correct place. Screws fit, everything is nice. Also compared to the previous version, we have those like rubber patches where you can route the front IO cables through that all worked fine. Also on the bottom, this also looks good. I would just add a few more holes in like this direction here or in this direction. So yeah, if you have additional cables coming from the back for like additional fans, temperature sensors, and like the front IO audio, all of this could be hidden a bit easier, but that's only a tiny detail. Apart from that, that was also quite smooth. Mounting the GPU was a bit more difficult. I think the screws in here, position wise should be like at least half a millimeter, maybe one millimeter more to the right because I like had to like first put in the screw and then like push in the GPU from the bottom and then tighten it. 
Uh, yeah, that's probably not the perfect way to do it, but that could also just be tolerances, maybe on the GPU, maybe on like combination of like mainboard screws, GPU and everything. And uh, yeah, the thing here, so you have these like flexible dust filters here as well. You have to push them out while uh, mounting the GPU, but that's also fine. Size-wise, you get the impression that you have a lot of space in here. But if we check this, like just measure from the board, uh, towards the case, it's like 20 or 21 centimeters. But you should keep in mind that you will lose additional three centimeters because of the fans that will stand into the case. But it's still plenty of room and at least with this 7900 XTX Liquid Devil should be more than fine. I'm also pretty much done with the water cooling loop right now. Just from the order, it starts with the pump, the outlet goes to the GPU, on the way there is a temperature sensor that is connected to the main board, then it goes into the CPU, and from there, there will be the both radiators in series. You could now argue that it might be better to add one of the radiator like in between the CPU and the GPU. Technically speaking, that's probably true, but also in theory, the higher the flow rate, the lower this kind of difference becomes. So like if you have an infinite, amount of flow rate, then the temperature will be the same in your entire loop. And also, I want to add that I did some comparison numbers prior to this video with my Mora at home and I had the same like loop order and I just want to have the same for comparison reasons. But theoretically, like you could maybe get like one degree Celsius colder CPU temperatures if you would like change something in the order. There are also like these tiny pieces of dust filters included in the delivery, which you can then like, yeah, I will do that later, but you can put it on these uh, like slot covers, same as the bottom one. Still have to do that. I also still have to add the remaining IO shield bracket here. That's something I still have to do. The back radiator is already mounted, ready to go. Also started with the tubing, like the final touches. And yeah, also for this, this is, this is quite useful. Like you have this um, like tiny plastic clamp on there where you can attach uh, the tubing to the side. That's quite helpful. I also want to point out that you have to keep in mind that these fans are kind of open. So especially in the back radiator where there are also like cables and stuff. It's easy that cables can go into the fans. I already talked to Dennis and he said that he will add fan covers like fan grills for the retail version to make sure this doesn't happen. This type of pump and reservoir combination is definitely a bit difficult to get to work because like there's very fine filter kind of prevents the water from like going to the pump, I think, because at least I filled the reservoir and then just switching on the pump, nothing happens. Hmm. One trick could probably be to take these Alpha Cool Quick Connect fittings and then if you like disconnect one of them and here's this valve inside and you press it down. The moment you press it down, you can see that this changes a little bit in the reservoir. So you can kind of fill the loop a little bit. At least making some progress, as you can see, there is some water flow. So I have to make sure that all the air will be gone, but on a good way. Everything is finally running. Fans are spinning at a fixed rate of about 350 RPM right now. And that is a region where you can absolutely not hear these fans. Same goes for the other radiator side. I will now close the system and then it's going to be so interesting what kind of temperatures we will see. Finally done. The only thing remaining is to add the back cover back to the case, but I have to shut down the system for that to remove the cable and everything. But yeah, now everything is assembled. I have to say that adding these radiator side panels is not as easy as it might seem. I mean, even though you can just put them on and slide them down, you have to keep in mind that once these big radiators are also filled with water and you have attached the tubing and the wiring and everything, it's not gonna make it easier. I had to like attach the left side panel three times and always check from the back through these like, like fan holes, like the dust filters, to see if some kind of like tubing or cable is stuck inside one of the fans. Obviously that's something you don't have to worry about in the retail version because there are going to be fan wheels on there, but for me, it was not that easy. In Hardware Info, we can check the fan speed. 
which is currently 320 RPM on both of the like inputs, but that equals eight fans in total. And I will try this with this setting now. Currently the idle water temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. I've been running Prime95 and also 3DMark GPU tests at the same time to perform like the max load test for both CPU and GPU. So that's much worse than any kind of gaming scenario. The CPU is currently running at 240 watt on average. I mean, it's a KS CPU, so temperature wise, this is expected. And I mean, probably won't matter how much radiator surface you're going to attach. You will always see these kind of temperatures. GPU temperature, we can also check. Water temperature is currently 33 degrees Celsius and GPU is constantly pulling like 320 watt on average. It's been about 40 minutes and we now reached a water temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, which I would personally say is kind of the limit you should have on a water cooling system because exceeding that usually kind of doesn't make water cooling worth it anymore. But I want to point out, I was running the lowest fan speed possible, at least right now with these fans, and they can ramp up to 800 RPM. So we will set that higher in a second to definitely get a better water temperature and better performance. But that was to test the worst case scenario, which already looks pretty promising. CPU was able to constantly pull about 218 to 219 watt which is definitely more than you would have on any kind of like gaming session, gaming scenario. And the GPU was constantly also maxed out at about 350 watt. You can see it's like 59 degrees Celsius right now. So that's, I mean, it's, it's warm, but even in the worst case scenario, it still works fine. Again, about 40 minutes later with higher fan speed, we have a slightly higher CPU package power draw because the water is significantly colder. You can see 32 degrees Celsius, that is with 600 RPM fan speed, which is something I personally still would consider, it's like you cannot hear it. You can hear it if you put your ears very close to the system, but like one meter away, it's, it's still so silent that you cannot hear anything. And with, 32, and with 32 degrees Celsius, that is definitely a good result. GPU temperature, typically around 50 degrees Celsius. Again, about 40 minutes later, final test result. CPU is consuming about 260 watt on average. The water temperature with 800 RPM, so that's 100% fan speed, is at 28 degrees Celsius. And I have a room temperature right now of about 22 degrees Celsius. So I think that is a really solid result. The fans with 800 RPM, you can hear them, but because they are rather big fans and the tone of them is like a very deep, very low tone, it is still enjoyable. And this could be like a 100% load scenario with like a 4090 or something. And I think that's, that's totally acceptable. GPU is at 46 degrees Celsius. Honestly, this was the comeback I did not expect especially considering how terrible the first product was and then how well this performs and how little time there was between like the first like the first case and this one i'm impressed i'm impressed with how he dealt with the entire like feedback and everything because looking at this you can see that he took all the feedback from the previous video to heart and he basically fixed everything we were complaining about rgb cooling Cable management definitely drastically improved. This could be a bit better. Like I said, on the bottom below the main board, there could be additional holes for easier cable routing, maybe some like tinier holes in addition next to it. So you can add zip ties to there to fix your cables that might make the entire cable management easier. But apart from that, it's, it's amazing. And also I want to highlight that like right now, this is running at 100% fan speed. And I wanted you to get an impression of how loud it is. And I mean, it's not loud at all. And you get 28 degrees Celsius water temperature, which is about six degrees Celsius higher than room temperature. And I think that is a pretty decent result. I'm not sure how much headroom there is. There certainly is a headroom. If you would remove all of these dust filters, they definitely restrict the airflow, especially because they're pretty tiny holes. I get that he made it also for visual purpose because looking at the side panel, it looks pretty smooth, pretty nice, high quality. I totally get that. But still, I'm not a big fan of dust filters simply because it's not like you don't have to like clean it, right? because people like to use them, so they think they don't have to maintain their PC. 
But in the end, especially with these that have these tiny holes, if there is a bit of dust building up, it will instantly restrict your airflow much further. So you ha still have to clean it every, like, I don't know, three, four, five months. And I think it might be better to just not have any of these dust filters, but still clean your PC in this period. But so that means in the rest of the time, you can have either better temperatures at the same fan speed or just use a lower fan speed for the same kind of performance. So it's more quiet. That's why I think maybe change to a different like filter type grid thing for the mesh or just get rid of them. I did not want to remove it for now because you have to take apart the side panels and he asked me not to do it. I guess he might also need this back because it's the only prototype he has right now and I totally respect that because like he was an awesome person to deal with. The way he worked with the feedback, it's amazing from my point of view and like from heart, I definitely wish him the best with this project because right, right now, this is something I would personally recommend. It's still pretty special and the price is also pretty special because it's 2,200 euro, which is a lot for a case. But you have to keep in mind that the components alone, so like the two big radiators, the eight big fans, then you have the tubing, you have the quick connect fittings, you have cables, you have the RGB header and all of this um, combined. Those components alone cost more than 1,100 euro so technically, the case itself is about 1,100 euro as well. And then if you keep in mind that you get a custom paint job, so you can tell them you want to have it in baby blue or like pink or whatever, they will do it within like four to six week delivery time. And typically, I, I remember I did that once like a custom paint for a case. This is easily like 300 or 400 euro. And in that regard, especially because it's manufactured in Germany, which is a completely different thing than manufacturing in Asia, I think the price is okay. It's, it's still high, don't get me wrong, but for what you get, I think it's okay. It's, it's reasonable. And I hope this can be some success for him because I think he deserves it. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.